Hey guys, welcome to TCT and the Crazy Troll Nation of YouTube. The crazy just because I am the troll because even with a little bit of face paint on, I still consider myself a troll. A cute troll, but a troll nonetheless. So far today, I've already done my foundation, and I'm going to put that video separate from this one. So I have one foundation, powder, blush, I did my brows, of course chapstick. That was the first thing, as usual. And setting spray. So that's what's on my face right now. And so I'm going to be playing around with my Inglot pigments. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going <laughs> to... Use them regularly on one eye and then mix with Doraline. Sorry about that. On the other eye because I want to see if it makes a difference. Does it make it any easier to apply? Even though I'm lazy. So I'm like, why did I even think I was going to be mixing stuff? But anyway. And hopefully I won't have a reaction to my Inglot pigments. Because I just recently found out. The shelf life after you open it is 18 months and I've had these since at least like 2011 and this is 2020. Anyway, so silly me didn't pull out the brushes I was going to use and so <laughs> I am doing that right now and I have duplicates of brushes which is great because then I when I do different eyes at least I can say whether it is the brush or not as to why the effect is different if it indeed is so the brushes that I have I might just have to wipe them off I'm I have two of the real techniques 305 which says insta shade brush so I have two of these I actually have three I was looking for a fourth one which I didn't find these are the angled shader brushes and then I have smaller shader brushes which are also angled and this is Instapop crease brush this is number 306 so I have two of these I only have one I thought I had two sorry for the noise I thought I had two of these blending brushes crease brushes I mean and I don't so I might just wipe this one off. This one is, what does it say? Base Shadow Brush. And this is number, it doesn't have a number. And I will be using um, Hourglass Brush number six is what these are. So I'm going to use one for one eye and one for the other eye except for this one. And I'll wipe it off in between. So I'm separating my brushes. <sighs> Sweating. I have one translucent setting powder and I have one setting spray and I don't know what people do that their found that they don't sweat or that their foundation doesn't and it wasn't even a foundation, like the sweat just comes through and it just beads up on top of my face. Okay, so where am I? I <laughs> wait, let me back up. The colors I'm gonna use I'm going to do a gradient look. I'm going to use number 55 on the inner lid. Number 56 on the center of the lid. Number 68 on the outer corner. And I may try to deepen the outer corner with number 88, which is a black. I was looking for um, a shade for my crease. And I may use this one, which is number 68. Five. So these are the shades we are going to be working with. These are the ones we're going to be working with. So hopefully all will go well. We'll see. That look crazy. <laughs> eyeshadow primer, the Fenty eyeshadow primer, which I've been using now for probably over a year at least or whenever she started her line. I like it because it's a tacky primer. Hopefully I don't get um, a lot of fallout, which I don't think I will using these angled shader brushes, eyeshadow brushes. I'm going to take, which I didn't pull out, this is a Sephora Pro Contour Highlight Brush number 80 
to smooth out the eyeshadow primer. Thank you for being here. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. If you're new, welcome. Let me know if you have Inglot pigments, what you think of them. Oh my gosh. It just feels so gross when I can feel. So what I do is, is I dip, I should use, this is the inner corner. Let me just start off with a smaller brush. Huh. Now you know what, we're just gonna go for it. So what I do is, is I dip into the pigment and then I tap it into the lid and then I work off of here. So this is what we have in the lid. And as you see, it's not any, not any more on the brush. And so I press it in, tap it off again, and I almost totally forgot I was going to do the other eye mixing this with the door line and I was getting ready to go over and put that there. Oh, good grief. Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, so we're going to wipe that brush off. So I wiped off the brush as best as I could. This is number 56. So we're just gonna tap in. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> Try not to make a mess. Tap this into the lid. <laughs> and most of it comes off so I didn't press in. Like when I go to use it, I press in and kind of wiggle. And that, that's what keeps it in the brush. And as you see, there's still quite a bit in here. So we're going to take that right next to the yellow. Oh, I love these. Hopefully I don't have a bad reaction. Okay, wipe off the brush again. This is going to be very colorful. <laughs> to the best of my ability. And go in with number 68. Wow. Every time I do use these, I'm just like, why have I not been using them? Tapping it off, as you see, most of it came off. Press it in and wiggle. Tap off into the lid still, and it's still a lot in here to work with. So we're gonna put that on the outer corner. And doing it this way, I don't get any fallout, because I'm just pressing. I have used the black before as a liner and because I was trying to swipe even like my lower lash line I did get fallout doing that. Um, I should have pressed it in first and then and then blend it. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm taking this brush now a different one. This is the Instapop. I'm sorry this is the base shadow brush and I'm going to this is number shade 65. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to dip it in and scoop a little bit. And we're going to tap into the lid. This is a lot that's in there. And then we're going to press and wiggle. Well, actually, yeah. And I am going to try to swipe without getting fallout. So I'm just swiping very slowly. Look at that color though. I'm going to tap again just because and then I am going to go back and forth and blend above the top edge of those lid colors. Look at, oh my gosh. Oh, I love these. Let me know what you guys think. No more color on this brush. I'm just still blending to blend out the top edge of this shade here. Oh my gosh. I will most likely edit. Um, I like that. When I go like this, the color goes away because of the lighting. And then when I don't, it don't. <laughs> when I don't, it doesn't. So now I'm going to, I will most likely edit some of this eye because I'm going to be mixing with the door line. And that's going to take up extra time. And so this is my first time even using Doorline. 
and so I don't know like what's going to happen so I'm going to with the clean brush I'm going to scoop out some oh my goodness this is gonna be messy and I'm going to tap it and this is the part you hold on to because it's more narrow so I'm going to tap that onto there then I'm going to take one drop of the door line because they say you only need like one drop push it yep push it one one drop of the door line this is oh my gosh this is gonna get mess <laughs> and so I'm gonna mix it oh, I'm supposed to mix it with the spatula not with the brush <laughs> this did not work out well <laughs> I am too lazy for this but we're going to see and it did make it into oh my gosh I don't even know what to say like this is what it did to the to the pregnant so it's not yeah so it made it like a pressed cream shadow almost but we're gonna put it on and see what it looks like does it look as vibrant as the other side yeah it kind of does because if this doesn't make a difference I'm gonna be like why am I even putting in the extra time to do this because that's just taking up extra time but I could see where this would be helpful if I was using like straight glitter, which I don't because I wear contacts and I do not need anything falling out into my eyes. It's the same look. I mean, it looks the same. Duh, I just said the same thing in two different ways. Welcome to the crazy. All right, so. <laughs> my idea was is that if I did purchase um, y'all know I have trouble doing more than one thing at one time if I do I'm tapping off that green shade I was going to get the Metropolis palette when it went on sale at Sephora and I am going to use a spatula when I mix that, that middle green shade which is even messier I'd rather just mix it with the brush this is like too much I was going to get the Metropolis palette. My idea was for it to, I don't like this spatula. Um, I'm just not used to it, that's what it is. So I'm, I went back to just using the brush again. My idea was to purchase the Metropolis palette to replace, for those shimmer colors. Oh, I don't like how this is. See this ball of sweat just dripping. Oh my gosh. <laughs> My idea was for the Metropolis palette to replace my Inglot pigments as far as the shimmer shades in that palette. And then when I tried these these Inglot pigments again, I was like, oh my gosh, if I can get these to work or if they still do work for me, then I won't feel as compelled to get the Metropolis palette. I think it looks the same. It looks more pigmented now, but I think it's because I have the edges blended out on this side. So we're going to wipe this brush off again. And I know I said I was going to edit this out. I lied. Not on purpose, though. <laughs> I'm going to need to play around with this door line. And because it is easier for me just to mix it with the brush. Or maybe I'm not using enough of the door line. To mix it with the spatula because then the spatula has leftover shadow on it and it's just like okay I'm wasting pigment yeah so I got I'm gonna have to get used to that if I want to get used to that so this is the outer corner and it does feel wet well because it is wet <laughs> from the door line I do like that it decreases the chance of fallout Oh, my eyelid feels heavy. I don't like that feeling. Uh, which is why I never use glitter glue. So I'm like, it'll be me to be like, oh, I can feel it on my lids. Even my doctor said I'm hypersensitive, and I believe her. All right, so I'm going to take the shadow, the shader brush, and go in with the color we use for the crease color. Woo, this is a mess. But it's a contained mess. 
I took out way too much pigment. And I know I said I was going to edit this out. <laughs> but I think this will be good because then you can see um, how long this process is. If you're using Dora Line. Actual, like in real time. Because the videos I saw, they were like, okay, you put the shadow here. Or they would scrape out um, pressed shadow and then say one or put in one or two drops of the door line and they would mix it with the spatula but they didn't do it for like every color so you really didn't know okay well what is the time frame like for using this I'm not sure oh an email Ooh, okay I think I put too much pigment Maybe not. And because it's wet, it's like where you put it is where it goes. and I mean, where it stays. And so I'm already feeling like this isn't going to blend out as well. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some and put some on this side. Because to me, this side is looking a lot darker. Yeah, so that's the only thing is once you place it and I might have put too much door line because this one I did two drops because I put in too much of the powder this right here the pigment so I think I might have just put too much and then also put too much door line because I put too much of the loose pigment so this is the look that we have and I'm going to which I'm almost scared to do. I kind of like the look. The green is a little... This is the brush I use for my crease shade. I'm just going to lightly just go over that green. Because I think this green in the middle is too bold. Actually, I'm going to just go over all of this. <laughs> just blend it all to the right. And this side, I'm going to blend all to the left. That green in the middle to me is too bright for what I did. I should have just used either this middle green and the end or the yellow and then this end color the outer corner color yup we're just blending everything I love the saturation of these pigments and I do think it looks pretty much the same oh my goodness Woo. as my dad would say whoo chow he always does that and I think it just sounds so funny when he does that whoo chow I think it's his tone of voice when he does it. I don't know. It's just something about it that just always makes me laugh. We'll be talking on the phone. He'll be like, ooh, child, and I'll start laughing. He'll be like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, Dad, I'm fine. <laughs> so we're going to... Oh, I got stuff everywhere. We're going to take this black, which I am scared. I, you know, I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm not going to use the hourglass brush. I'm going to use... Uh, what is this? This is the Fenty Brush Precision number 220 and I actually have two of them so one I'm going to use the black without the door line I'm going to tap it into the lid this might not be a good idea <laughs> and we're going to place that on our lower lash line I'm going to try to just push it <laughs> I look like a raccoon. Then I'm going to take <laughs> the brush I use for my crease. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dip into that crease shade. <laughs> and unfortunately, this has door line on it. I picked this up from on this thing. Y'all, this is a mess. That was not the right brush to use for that. I am probably not going to upload this video. <laughs> I could fix that though. I'm going to fix that. So we're going to take a little black. Put onto this dish. Take a tiny bit of the door line. Mix it with the brush. 
<laughs> and because it's wet, I can just go straight across without fear of fallout. Okay, this I like. This is what I wanted. <laughs> I know, I know I'm out of control, I know. I'm going to take a brush with no color, no anything. This is a Forever number 19 Pro Crease Brush, which I don't know why I'm using a crease brush. But I'm going to just try to blend that out some. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the crease shade from in the lid. <laughs> Tap that off. And I know that I probably should have used a different brush. And I'm going to use that to just blend. Because the door line with that color as a liner, that black, that doesn't look good either. This is not the right brush for this. One day I'll learn. <laughs> it will make a shadow into a liner. Because that was a very, a very distinct line. So what I'm going to do to try to fix this is take this thingy. And just try. I know that looked gross. So excuse me for. This is not coming off. Well some of it did. But. Another thing about. I like that. Another thing about these Inglot pigments. When you place them down. They will not move. It is so hard to get them to move. They will stay where you put it, which is a good thing. As long as you place it down where you want it. Because <laughs> if you don't, you will be stuck looking crazy. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to take some concealer. We're going to see if this will work, which I don't know if it will because I already have my powder and everything. You know, and I'm not even going to do that because then I'm going to just be looking really crazy. So this side looks like somebody punched me. <laughs> but you've seen firsthand how a shadow will look or pigment will look without the door line mixed in with the door line mixed in. As far as the color, even like my elbows, like sweat is just dripping. Oh, this is gross. <laughs> the colors look the same, so it does not affect the color of the eyeshadow at all. And I like the look. I like this side better only because the liner came out in a straight line and not like somebody punched me in the eye. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my Safari palette and take Tamarind, this, corner, this color here in the corner, because that is a great cover-up shade for me. And I'm going to take the Sephora number, I don't know, number 86 <laughs> bullet crease brush. And I'm going to dip that straight into Tamarind. And I'm going to tap that off. And I'm going to try to tone down this raccoon over here. Them pigments for even going on dry as you saw it will not move but I think it looks less harsh still look like a raccoon but less harsh <laughs> and because I did the other side I'm gonna put this over here as well so this is my experiment with the door line will I continue to use it I will definitely use it to make a shadow into a liner because I have this entire thing of black. And I do like how that came out on that side. So let me got, let me know, guys, what you think of Inglot pigments. Oh, they're so freaking sweaty. All right, so thank you for watching. And I'm sorry that, like, I should do like this. I'm sorry one side like I got punched in the eye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. If you use DoorLine, let me know how it works for you. And are you able to effectively use it with the spatula? Or do you just use your brush to mix, mix it in that way, which was just easier for me. And then plus, I was left with um, shadow on the brush. And I'm just like, how do... Not the brush. I was left with shadow on the spatula. So I'm like, well, that's just a waste. Um, 
and this is just messy. I look like a painter, which I'm not. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go um, just something real quick on my lips just because this is Fussy Gloss Balm on top of my chapstick. I just realized I didn't do any liner on my upper lash line, nor did I do mascara, which I'm not going to do mascara. I am so retarded still because I could have used the black pigment for liner for my upper lash line. I'm so used to not using the pigments, so I automatically just reach for this one. When I could have used the black like I did underneath my lower lash line. Duh. I'll get used to it. Because I'm going to keep playing around with it. I'm really going to go this time. You guys will see me in the next video. Thanks. We'll do this. I cleaned this up. I did put concealer um, under here as you can tell so it was bright. And then I had to go in and add powder to it. Because I'm thinking, do I really want to wash my face and then start all over with the foundation for the Zoom call? And so I think it turned out okay, except it's looking too bright. Anyway, because of the concealer. What I wanted to say is, is this door line is no joke. Okay, it took me a lot longer than usual to wash my brushes. It took me about 20 minutes or more to wash my brushes. I'm lying. At least a good 20 minutes to wash my brushes. Usually I'm done in less than 10. Because... The brushes that I used on this side with the um, the door line and the pigments, it was staining my brushes. It stained, oh, and you guys probably can't even see it, there you go. It stained here. And so I would put soap on here and then wipe the brush on it and it stained it. That has never happened before. I'm like, this door line is no joke and it looks worse in person than it does on camera. These two brushes, this one I used with the black pigment dry under this eye. This one I used with the black pigment with the door line. I'm going I'm to try and get it to where you can see it. This is the door line brush. You see how it's darker? The pigment is stuck. I mean, it stained the brush. <laughs> this one, that's the one that I used um, the door line with the black pigment, the loose angle lap pigment. It stained the bristles on the brush. These two brushes, <laughs> this one I used um, for my eyeshadow primer, okay, which has no color, the primer. This one I used with the concealer to clean up under my eyes and then to pull it outward. The pigment, it stained the brush. The pigment with the door line stained the brush. Okay, non-door line, door line with pigment. <laughs> look at that, it stained my brush. Also, I want to say, I'm going to look at some more videos to see if this waterproofs your makeup. And I'm saying that, be oh, you know what, it does say it. I'm reading it now, duh, after I didn't use it, right? Door line mixed with a makeup product of your choice creates a liquid waterproof formulation. Now it makes sense, but still, and when I use, the brush I use for concealer and primer, I do wash it first with my Dawn dish detergent because that breaks down oil and grease, and then I'll go back in with the baby shampoo, which is what I use just for my regular eyeshadow brushes. But it still stained the brush. That has never happened before. And the reason I was wondering if it did waterproof it is, <laughs> this is the, the palette that I used. As I was washing brushes, I would rotate and have the stream of water directly on one of the colors. And as I said, it took a good 20 minutes to clean my brushes. And look at this. The colors are still there. So, <laughs> this stuff is no joke. You want to waterproof something? I'm going to try this. I think I'm going to try this with foundation. Because you guys see how I sweat just with these lights on. I did not... Um, removed my foundation since the last videos I did. I just kept patting it. But once I'm out from behind the lights, I'm not as sweaty. 
and so I'm just going to leave it. But I'm debating on whether or not to try this with foundation to just see what it does. The reason I'm hesitant to do that is because my eyelid <laughs> feels heavy. And I know it's something I can probably get used to, but I am aware that there's additional product on my eye. This eye doesn't feel that way. This is the one where I just went in with the pigment, except a little bit with the door line pigment in my crease, just this area. But like this entire lid area, this whole lid area, area, I can feel a little bit of pressure. It's like I'm aware that there's something on there. Sort of like if you wear a foundation that's too thick or too heavy or too matte, you can just feel it sitting on your face. That's how I feel with this eye. Like I can feel that there's something extra on this eye area and I I'm, I don't like that feeling. I could probably get used to it but I'm like do I want to? If it's a rainy day and I want to do an eye look then yeah maybe I would but just for regular every day like I, I don't know and as far as how it looks it doesn't interfere with the color of the, the shadows or the loose pigments I used so color wise it looks the same. What I will most likely continue to play with this with is using the loose pigments as eyeliners because I really like how I was able to just do a straight smooth line versus how you saw how this side the pigment just kind of went everywhere which is why I had to try to clean it up or just wash it off but I do like how I was able to do that and playing with the different pigments as liners that gives me a lot of options for different colors without worrying about fallout if you do worry about fallout with your eyeshadow in general this would be good to scrape off some of your powder shadow onto a palette, mix it with some door line and put it on because then you won't have to worry about fallout at all. Um, and as you saw from the video, if you watch it, it is kind of long. Um, once you place it, it stays. So if you're going to blend it, you need to be quick. Wherever you put this, it's not going to move, <laughs> which is a good thing. And so it's six on one hand and half a dozen on the other. For me, being lazy with makeup, I just want to put it on and it works. So it's either take my time, place shadow carefully so that, so that I don't have fallout, and particularly loose pigments. Take my time, apply the loose pigments in a way where I won't have fallout, or spend that time mixing the loose pigment with the door line and then just applying it wherever and not have to worry about fallout at all. The only thing is, is once it's there, it's there. Whereas without the door line, if I want to move it or um, blend it more, it will do that. And so I, I, those are my thoughts. <laughs> so I am glad I tried it because I will, as I said, definitely continue to use this with the different pigments as liners. And I'm also going to play with it for liner on my top um, lash line as well, which I had a brain fart. And when I'm like, oh, I didn't put on liner, I just immediately grabbed this one instead of using a black pigment like I did underneath. So that's just part of the crazy, not really thinking. But anyway... I just wanted to come back and show you that this stuff is for real. It will stain your stuff. It'll stain your brushes. It'll stay where you put it. It'll waterproof <laughs> whatever you use it with, <laughs> which is a good thing. And there are tons of videos on YouTube about the different ways that you can use Doraline. And so check those out and let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.